Week's two lab uh, deals with the microscope, different bacterial shapes, fungi. We're also going to be looking at some staining, simple and gram stains, as well as the KOH string test. So please, in addition to this handout, please be reading your lab manual and please be looking at uh, different things that are in the picture atlas. So I've got pictures of rod coxine spiral and pictures of molds and yeast in there as well. So in regards to the microscope, there's another video out there that really shows you how to use it, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here. But one of the things that we're trying to do is increase the resolution, and that's the clarity of the image. So we have to make it big enough so that you're able to actually see uh, something in the microscope. So most of the bacteria that we use are very, very small, so we have to actually go all the way up to the oil immersion lens, which is the 100x lens. So we have what's considered a compound microscope, so we have more than one lens system that's in there. And you want to keep in mind that there's an inverse relationship between magnification and the field of focus. So the lower the power, uh, the larger the field. And then you kind of zoom in as you increase the power and the field then gets a little bit smaller. So, please know the different parts of the microscope. Starting at the top, we have our ocular lens, then we have our revolving nose piece, objective lenses, the stage, iris diaphragm, condenser is the whole lens here, then the coarse adjustment knob and fine focus knob right here. So a couple of things I'd like you to, to study in regards to the microscope parts. First of all, your oculars have a power of 10x, so please know that. Power of 10x. Your iris diaphragm, which is this little knob right here, actually adjusts the amount of light that will go into your specimen. So again, iris diaphragm adjusts light that goes into the specimen. The condenser lens, Please note that the condenser lens should be even with the stage, even with the stage, for the best resolution. Now, when you focus your microscope, when you get to the 40x objective and the 100x objective, only use the fine focus knob. Don't use any other knobs than the fine focus knob. So, couple of things also that I would like you to take a look at in your lab manual on page 9 are some terms that you need to know. So, parfocal, ma total magnification, resolution, and refraction. These are all important characteristics of the microscope that I'd like you to study. Also, when you are using the microscope, you have to make sure that you clean it before and after you use it and please watch the video that I have specific to the microscope because I show you exactly how to do that. Now again, as you're going through reading this, another important thing that I just mentioned to you is that you use your iris diaphragm when adjusting the amount of light. That's very important. You don't want to keep turning the intensity up, but you need to get more light into your specimen. And also, to get the best resolution, make sure that condenser is even with the stage. That's very important. Now when you're finished, you have to make sure that you clean your lenses again. And something that's very important for you guys to know is when you clean your lenses, always start by cleaning the 4X first. This will be on your test and your quiz. Start by cleaning 4X first, then 10X, then 40X, and then 100x. And if you notice anything dirty on there, uh, please clean that up as well. So as a heads up, again class, anytime you see things that are in bold in the lab manual or in our handouts, please study those because they are concepts that will be on your exam. Now, we're also going to be looking at slides so you'll have to be able to identify a rod, cocci, and spiral. Those pictures are in your picture atlas, so please look at those. 
also please know that there are different arrangements of cocci. Now cocci are the round ones and diplo would be pairs, strepto would be chains, tetrads are in four, sarcina eights, and staphylo is clustered. So please know that. Now when we talk about molds and yeast guys, again please know the terms that are in bold. A massive hyphae is called a mycelium. Hyphae are filaments. A septa would be a cross wall. So those that are considered septate will have this cross wall uh, that divides the hyphae into compartments. Coenocynic don't have cross walls. Now yeast can have what are known as pseudo hyphae. So please know this that a pseudo hyphae is chains of buds in yeast. Now sometimes fungi can be mold like or yeast like and we call that dimorphic and this depends on the environment. Now class for your exams as far as fungal spores go all you have to know is which ones are asexual and which are sexual. So please study for yourself there are five asexual sporangiospore and conidia those are two the last three are phyllospores, blastospores, and arthrospores. For sexual, there are three, zygospores, ascospores, and vestidiospores. Now please again look at the slides of the yeast and mold in your picture atlas. Now before you do any kind of staining, you have to make a smear, and basically you put some water, and again, I demonstrate that in the uh, gram stain video. But you put a drop of water on, add some of your bacteria, you smear it across the surface, and you heat fix. Heat fixing is very important, class. So you have to heat fix the smear in order to adhere the bacteria and kill it. Again, you heat fix in order to adhere the bacteria and to kill it. So right here, please know that. Adhere bacteria and kill it. Now for simple staining, you only add one type of stain guys. All you have to do for instance is add crystal violet, let it sit a minute, rinse it, dry it, and then you take a look at it under the microscope. Now for the gram stain, this is a little bit more complicated. Uh, it's really cool, guys, because you can tell the difference between gram positive and negative cells uh, based on the thickness and difference in their cell walls. So for the gram negative, they've got a thin layer of peptidoglycan. They also have an outer membrane on the outside whereas gram-positive have thick peptidoglycan and they've got an inner membrane, tachoic acids, etc. So please review this. Uh, now, what I'd like to do is show you a slide that I put up in the lecture. Not all of you are in the lecture, so I want to share this with everybody. And this shows the steps and what's going on. Now, again, class, for lab, you don't have to take a screenshot, okay? You don't have to take the screenshot. But uh, here's the steps. You start off with your heat fix smear. Then you're going to cover the bacteria with crystal violet. Now, crystal violet has a positive charge, and the bacteria have a negative charge, so it sticks to both the gram-negative and the gram-positive. They'll both be purple. Iodine X is a mordant. It will hold on to the crystal violet. It forms a complex. Again, they will both be purple. Then you have your decolorizer. Now what happens is this, so please know this. For gram-positive, you dehydrate, you dehydrate the cell wall and you trap the crystal violet iodine, therefore it's going to stay purple. Again, gram-positive, dehydrate, 
trap crystal violet iodine stays purple. However, if you look at the gram negative, you wash away the outer membrane and you wash out the purple color. So when you do that, then your gram negative at this step is going to be clear. In the last step, you add a counter stain that's called saffronin. So with saffronin, guys, it's a reddish color. Well, gram positive stays purple. Purple's darker than red. The gram negative, however, is going to be a pink color because of that. So take a look on the left-hand side here, and you can see that these dark dots that we have if we take a look, you can see you've got some really nice uh, dark purple in here and some pink. The purple are gram positive and the pink are gram negative bacteria. So again, I ask you to please take a look for yourself guys at the gram stain video that I put up because it goes into the steps uh, and demonstrates exactly how you do those. Okay, and then the last thing that I just want to mention, guys, is we have what's known as a KOH string test. And with that test, basically what, what happens is if you add a KOH 3% solution to gram-negative bacteria, they will get very sticky. So gram-negative will be sticky. And what happens with gram-positive, guys, is that uh, the 3% KOH doesn't really break it down, so that stays watery. So again, for KOH, please know, gram-negative bacteria will be sticky or viscous, gram-positive will be watery.